So the question is, can a device like this actually lift and contour and tone your facial features? Can it add to the elasticity of your skin? Does it give long-term benefits that are worth your time, your energy, and your money? We're going to discuss that today. This is the Metacube EMS device. This video is not sponsored. I purchased this device myself. I've been testing it out for a little while, and I've got some thoughts on their claims. I've got some thoughts on you know my particular results, what I noticed, and then we're also going to dig in just a little bit about EMS and whether or not you should actually be using that on your skin. If you are new here, my name is Penny. I am a master esthetician. I would love it if you subscribe before you go. I do all kind of product reviews on this channel, device reviews, tutorials, and treatment protocols. So definitely would love to have you part of the fam. Just hit that red subscribe button down there. Click the bell so that you're notified anytime I drop a new video. And uh, let's get into this. First of all, let's talk about Metacube. Now I did pick up all of Metacube's devices and I'm going to be doing doing a review on each and every one of them. This is just the first one that we're doing. First of all, Metacube is a Korean brand and they do have several devices. They are focusing on the muscles. They're also focusing on collagen and then they're focusing on the pores. This one is focusing on muscles and then also the relationship with elasticity. And we will definitely get into that. This uses EMS. Now EMS is electrical muscle stimulation and it's exactly exactly what it sounds like. When you apply this to your skin, it will go in, the current goes in, grabs onto the muscle and causes it to contract and relax as if you were exercising that muscle. So it floods the system so that the muscle has to contract. And when it does that, it basically is exercising the muscle, theoretically causing the muscle to get stronger, to get more tone and taut, to become more elastic because of that exercise. And then also, of course, the idea is to cause it to lift. Now, when I look at the Metacube website, we're gonna look at that together really quickly. This is called the Face Contouring HR Derma EMS Shot. What I wanted to point out to you are a couple of things. Number one, I really do think it's important to dissect some of their graphics so that you can be an informed consumer. Number one, you will see this graphic on their website that says microcurrent and EMS, are they different question mark? And their answer is not really. Microcurrent in skincare is a generic term that collectively refers to a wide range of low intensity currents. Now here's the deal. Their answer is misleading. The fact that they say that microcurrent and EMS are not really different, they show you that there is this microcurrent therapy kind of um, overarching theme. And then in that theme is iontophoresis, EMS, and microcurrent. So they're implying that all of those things are microcurrent, and that is not true. Iontophoresis is not microcurrent. It is an electric current that's applied to your skin, and it's used for dry driving water-based products into your skin. But that is different than microcurrent as we all know when we're talking about New Face or Zip or Myolift or anything like that. Iantophoresis is not the same as that. Now also EMS. EMS is electrical muscle stimulation. And while it sounds the same as microcurrent and we kind of think of them like they might be the same, it is a much deeper stimulation and it is more like passive ex exercise. It's more like causing the muscles to really contract and relax and therefore go through this process as if they're being exercised which if like going to the gym will cause them to be healthier and bouncier and more taut and more lifted, that kind of thing. Where microcurrent is this super duper gentle, low, low intensity, doesn't cause that same contraction and release from the muscle and helps to promote something called adenosine triphosphate. Now adenosine triphosphate is kind of the linchpin here, okay? And it's really, really important to understand that we are always trying to boost adenosine triphosphate. That is an energy, a cellular energy source or K 
carrier in our body that is responsible for aiding in all kinds of processes. So collagen and elastin when we're talking about skincare and skin in general, skin health. And so we always want to be mindful of what we are doing to affect the ATP in our skin. Okay. Now for the longest time, I have been taught that that EMS actually depletes ATP in your skin. So I have mostly avoided it. Now I say mostly because there are benefits to EMS when it comes to body treatments, when it comes to muscle recovery for athletes, also atrophied muscles benefit from EMS. I discussed EMS when I talked about my masseter Botox that I didn't love and I would use EMS trying to help it wear off faster. EMS is definitely beneficial to atrophied muscles. It can be used, you know, with under a doctor's care, of course, with Bell's palsy and Huntington Whitley syndrome, that kind of thing. EMS can be beneficial for that. So EMS is, is definitely something that can be beneficial. The question in my mind is, does it increase ATP or does it lower ATP? And an analogy that I was trying to think of is this. If you were going, you had two car washes that you could choose from to take your beautiful car. You have a beautiful, beautiful car and you have a sports car, let's say. You have two car washes you can choose from and one of those car washes you're going to go through and your car comes out and it is absolutely beautiful and shiny and it looks just perfect. Only the car wash took a little bit of your battery when you went through. And every time you go through that car wash, it takes a little bit more of your battery. So your battery battery doesn't perform as well. Your car has looked beautiful every time that you go through, but on the inside, it's getting depleted and it's kind of, you know, running the engine down. You have this other car wash that you're going through and your car comes out and it's beautiful and it's shiny. That, that car wash doesn't affect your battery at all. Or maybe that car wash actually gives your battery a little bit of a bonus, adds a little bit to it improves your battery just a little bit. Which car wash are you gonna, which one are you gonna choose? I'm pretty sure you're gonna choose the one that not only makes you look beautiful on the outside, makes the outside look shiny and gorgeous, but it also affects the inside in a positive manner. Think of that battery as your ATP. We don't wanna be going through the car wash that's going to slowly over time degrade our battery. Okay. That's the best analogy I could come up with. I've been really thinking about this, trying to think of a way that we could all think of it concretely instead of just, you know, imagining what's happening. Because I will admit that using this will often make you look better in the moment. And it is a lot like exercise where you have to continue to do it. And if you don't do it on a regular basis, just like exercise, you're not going to retain your results, same as microcurrent, and you're not going to get results if you don't do it on a regular basis. Okay, so that's EMS and that's the ATP connection. I did look to see if there were any studies that I could pull that would directly correlate the effect of EMS on ATP. There aren't a lot of things out there that are really apples to apples when we're talking about using it on our face, but I am gonna go through a couple and I will link them in the description box so that we can see you know, what science I could dig up and maybe if you know of any other studies, leave them in the comment section. I would love to read them myself. Okay, the first study that I found, the title is ATP content in single fibers from human skeletal muscle after electrical stimulation and during recovery. So of course, we're not talking about the facial muscles, we're talking about muscles in our body, but it was the closest thing that I could find. And basically they said the ATP content was measured in type one and type two fibers from human muscle at rest after electrical stimulation and during recovery. And what they found was the muscle tissue showed a mean decrease in ATP. Now, the next study that I found was called ATP and phosphocreatine changes in a single human muscle fibers after intense electrical stimulation. So again, it's in human muscle fibers, but it's after intense electrical stimulation. So of course, I don't know how that compares to this intensity, but again, it's a correlation between electrical muscle stimulation and ATP. And what they found was with biopsies, they took biopsies from the muscle at rest immediately after intermittent electrical stimulation with occluded circulation. And basically they found that the ATP also decreased. 
Now, in both of these studies that I'm talking about, the ATV does resynthesize, but it sounds like after 15 minutes, it's not synthesized back up to zero. In one study, it's back up to 91% in one of the fibers, and in the other study, it's back up to like 95% and 76%. So the ATP is definitely depleted. It, it works its way back up. It works back because that's what it does. And But it definitely is depleted to begin with. So the deal is you have to decide if that is important to you or are you happy to get some of the benefits that definitely are from EMS. Now, a couple of things. When I tested this out, I tested it on my whole face, but I did not go up into my upper eye forehead area because I really don't think that EMS should be used on the smaller muscles up here, the and on thinner, you know, areas where we have less kind of fat, etc., more bony areas. I think the EMS is best concentrated on the lower face, on the larger muscles, if you are going to choose to use it. When I look at their um, pamphlet that comes with the device, they do have a couple of things that are call outs. It's a great pamphlet, I will tell you. It is very, very thorough. Um, but something that I did notice right off the bat is that they have some uh, before and afters. And in their before and afters, you guys, a, a kind of a red flag. It says elasticity improvement in the outer skin layer around crow's feet, for example. This is one of their before and after pictures. And if you look right underneath the pictures in fine print, with an asterisk, it says simulation image for demonstration purpose only. I'm not sure what a simulated image is. I mean, if I, if I took that quite literally, it, it would be a made up image, an image that simulates the image that you would take of a person. And it says before use, this is the elasticity, it's at whatever, and after it's at whatever, and it's an improvement of 18.38% after one use. The skin elasticity has improved that much. Okay, so that is a red flag to me because skin elasticity isn't going to improve after one single use, true skin elasticity. Now, the hydration of the skin is likely improved that much. And so therefore, the bounce and the elastic feel of the skin is likely improved. And that's not a bad thing. That's actually a really, really great thing. But that's more due to their conductivity gel than it's going to be to your elastin fibers actually being improved by 18 point some odd percent. So once again, I feel like the information is slightly manipulated to sound a certain way when it's not exactly quite that. So it's a really impressive leaflet that's a little bit over the top, if you ask me. When I used this device, I definitely felt like my skin looked more luminous after I used it, after the very first time. I felt like it looked a little bit more taut. I felt like it looked a little more bouncy. All of those things that could be elasticity, I chalk all of that up to this. Their HR Booster Gel is one of the best conductivity gels I've ever used. I will give them that this stuff is good. And the reason why the ingredient deck is great, but also what I really liked about it is it's very, very hydrating. It's not terribly sticky. You can spray it down with, you know, like a Ven or something like that to keep it hydrated. And so it works really, really well. But when I'm done, if I don't use too much, I can actually tap it into my skin and leave it on. I think that is what is giving the effect of that skin looking better texture. It looks more taut. It looks more bouncy. It's all about the hydration and the ingredients in here. I truly, truly believe that. I don't think it's because this did anything permanent to the structures underneath my skin. Now, the other thing about this is that you can just gently wipe it off where you don't get all of it off if you use a lot of it. And again, it is really, really nice under other skincare, with your makeup, all of that stuff. That's a huge plus for me. I love the idea of a connectivity gel that kind of just becomes your skincare for the day because it makes the device or whatever device you want to use with this a lot more usable. Because half the 
the time, the roadblock for using one of these devices is the goop, the gunk, the mess, the effort, all of that stuff. And if you take one of the roadblocks out and you make it a benefit, then I think we're more likely to actually use the device. Okay, so going through here just a little bit more, they also say, and this was really particularly interesting to me, it has three different modes. It has a mode called slim, up and body. Now these are all meant to mimic esthetician moves and they do. The first one is um, meant to mim mimic a type of facial massage that I was taught in school many moons ago where you're tapping and you're slapping and you're really stimulating the skin and truly the current on that mode does genuinely feel like that. Now they call that treatment slim. It's one of the three that are here. They call it slim and I'm sure that that goes along with the whole V-line trend of slimming the face at the lower part and everything, um, which is also kind of gimmicky if you ask me, but whatever. And then the next one is called up. Now up stimulates the subdermal muscles to help improve elasticity. Now this one is meant to uh, designed to simulate petrissage, which again is another form of uh, another form of massage that we learned in esthetician school. In fact, you guys, I went and got out my textbook from esthetician school that I have not looked at in so long. And I just kind of looked back at all of the different types of massage. And yes, it does actually feel quite a bit like it is, you know, it is simulating that type of massage. And then the third mode on here is called body. This particular mode is meant to simulate friction. Now, Friction is another form of massage that we learned in aesthetic school, but on your body, it can help really soothe the muscles. It can help with strengthening the muscles. So I could see this being a great benefit to the shoulders, maybe the tops of the arms, maybe the, um, you know, above the knees, things like that. I actually am going to give this a really good go on a specific area and see if I can get any results. I'm terrible when it comes to the body. I fall off the wagon fast, but I'm going to try really hard. That that makes this relatively interesting to me. Now it does have an LED light. Let's see if we can find it here. So like you can, I hope you can see, it's on green right now. Now they kind of imply on their website that that is meant for skincare, but I will tell you that as LED goes, that's gonna do nothing. That's literally gonna do nothing. So I would not rely on the LED for any kind of light emitting diode therapy, light therapy like we talk about often on this channel. That is not what that is, it's an indicator light. So again, it's just slightly misleading. Slightly sounds like they're making that LED be a feature, a skincare feature, when it's not a skincare feature at all. You're getting EMS from this device and that's that's it, that's what you're getting. Now, when I look in here further, it definitely gives you some nice instructions on how to use the device. It goes over what the device is, all of that kind of stuff. The very question that you have to ask is, what do you think about ATP depletion in your battery? What do you think? Do you think that that is, you know, where do you fall on that? Do you think that if it can lift and sculpt and tone and give you a better looking appearance on the outside, but you might be sacrificing a little ATP in those sessions because it sounds like the ATP resynthesizes, is it worth it to you or is it not worth it to you? That's the question that you really do need to ask yourself. You also need to really dissect some of the claims that some of these companies make. And so when we go forward with Metacube and we look at the air shot and we look at the deep shot, we're gonna do the same thing. We're really gonna dissect and see, you know, what are these claims? And if they're willing to kind of fudge the language so that it sounds like something, I guess to me it's like overall, what's the truth? That's where I start to question, you know? You don't wanna find these little things that are like, hmm, I don't know. So I just wanted to lay it all out to you in, a, in as much of an unbiased way as I possibly can. Now, the last question is, am I glad I have it? I kind of am, I kind of am. I'm sort of interested in what it might do to my upper arms or my knees or whatever like that. 
But would I have purchased it just for that? No, no, I would not purchase it just to use on my upper. I own the new body. I just use that. I'd use my Pico with gloves, you know, that kind of thing. So no, I would not buy this just as a body treatment. And then it makes you question, do you want to use it as a facial treatment alone? Is it worth it to you for that? The entire idea here is for us to, you know, open this up and really dissect and understand what is being presented to us and what it really is. I hope that you are having a really wonderful day. I hope this video was helpful and I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care and subscribe.